us with something that is so much bigger. I thought we're doing pretty good before. And the fear of God came and I thought, my God. You know, what's happening in Lakeland is without any exaggeration, it, it's kind of the thing that anybody and everybody's talking about either good or negatively. You know, what's happening here? You know, I got a phone call today from England. They said, Todd, did you know that on YouTube, the Lakeland Revival is number eight in the world of the most watched videos on the YouTube. I said, what? Number eight most watched in the entire world. They're watching the Lakeland Revival on YouTube. And I said, my telephone rings every day. I think I'm going to throw it away. You know, I got a call today from Lou Engel in the call. And he said, Todd, we got up in Kansas City today. And I declared publicly in Kansas City today, Todd, that the call, the movement is behind the Lakeland outpouring and we endorse it. And he said, he said, it's time for us to begin to rally the intercessors around the world to pray for what's happening in Lakeland, that the revival would be burned and that the revival would go everywhere. And I said, my God, there's so many people that are for what you're doing. It was such a different response than some of the other leaders I've talked to. It was, you know what we need to do? We need to pray that this thing would become such an end time world shaken revival that the entire world would be changed. And you know what? We need to pray that. People are, oh, is this really revival? Is it? Let's try to figure it out. Why don't you pray that it is? Why don't you want it to be? I cannot believe that there's people out there that don't want God to be moving in revival again. Oh no, just when we got over Pensacola. Oh God, no, not again. Just when they thought, oh, it's dying down in Toronto. And it ain't. Just when people thought, hey, there's no real move of God going on in there. And everyone was getting happy again. Not us. Not us. Do you realize where we stand in history? This is a Tuesday night. But I believe that there are people watching me tonight too. You need to make the decision today before you figure the whole thing out whether you're going to accept it or not. Not everything in the trough that's messy is God. Oh, you know, something that's been in my spirit ever since God touched me with revival is I just go for it. chips fall we're preaching the gospel people are getting saved and healed let's just go for it and you know I felt something sovereign in the spirit tonight that I've not felt in 48 days as we were singing Lord just open up the heavens and let the rain come down you know, I felt something. I felt the Lord say that he was offering tonight. Whoever wants it. If you're really accepted, 
it'll break out in your church it'll come to your city it'll come to your nation it'll come to your ministry oh one thing I know about God is he's so generous with the anointing he's so generous with the anointing And if you'll accept this anointing, if you'll accept this move of God, maybe you need to get on an airplane and come get some. It might not be enough to just watch. But there's people here tonight. And in this arena tonight, you've come to see. Tonight's the night whether we decide we're going to cross over or not. I'm already crossing, Roy. I'm so far on the other side. But because I know this anointing is so much bigger than Todd Bentley, it's so much bigger than Lakeland. I, I just thank God that for one time the world can come to me and I can just enjoy what's happening here in this epicenter. And when the Lord releases me, we'll bring it to the earth. But I believe that there's something happening in the spirit right now. And if you'll just stand up and take this anointing for your life, for your ministry, for your church, without trying to figure it out, God, do I want it? What about all the manifestation? What, what about all the stuff I heard out there on the internet? And is he really a false prophet? And oh my God, what if they're not real? So, just let it all go. You should be able to recognize the presence of God. If you cannot discern the presence of God. And I don't even need the legion in this prayer right now. I want you to pray from a hungry heart. I want you to cry out from a hungry heart. I want you to get caught up in the face of Jesus and take this anointing. I want you to take this anointing. I want you to be a carrier of this anointing. I want you to be a carrier of this glory. I want you to be a carrier of this fire. I want you to say, my God, let the floods come down. Open up the windows of heaven and let the floods come down. Pour out the floods, the floods, the floods, the floods coming into my church, coming into my city, coming into my nation. The floods, the floods tonight, the, all the floods tonight, all the floods tonight. Oh, the floods of anointing. 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 Oh, my God. My God. My God. And wherever it takes me, the wind blows wherever it wishes. Come, Holy Spirit, fill me with revival again. And I say, yes, Lord. It's going to resurrect your church. It's going to resurrect your ministry. It's going to resurrect. It's going to resurrect. Come on. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. I received the word from the Lord. You, this glory, when it gets on you, this favor, when it gets on you, this miracle anointing, when it gets on you, it's going to break out and there's going to be a new life and there's going to be a new grace and there's going to be a new power and there's going to be a new anointing and there's going to be a new favor and there's going to be a resurrection, a resurrection. A resurrection, a resurrection of your church and a resurrection of your ministry. I want you to take it right now. I'm talking about a healing, a healing of spiritual bankruptcy, a healing, a healing of natural bankruptcy in the name of Jesus. And if you're going to accept it, you got to everything else that, that's God I'm talking about what's God not the fluff not the hype 
But when I told the Lord I wanted revival, I told the Lord I would pay any price for revival. I said, my God. Just one anointing, one season in my life that would touch the world. I said, God, I'll pay any price for this one, one grace. I said, my God, if it's 90 days, if it's, if it's 120 days, if, just let it touch the world. Just one season. It's so precious. A move of God's spirit. It's so different than anything else that you've ever done. I said, my God. I know it's a portal that's open that'll never close. But you need to understand it's so precious to come back night after night and to feel the anointing that I feel night after night in this pulpit. Oh, God. I'll lay anything down. It's cost my wife and I coming into this outpouring have paid every price you could imagine. And before I was ready for this hour, I can honestly say I was more broken than at any other time of my life. I almost lost my health physically, my body, my marriage, my ministry. Oh, but the glory today. My beautiful bride, Shauna, today. And my health today. And nobody knows. But I said, Lord, I'd lay it all down again. And when I was praying this afternoon, I saw people paying the price and letting the offenses go. Because some people have an offendable heart. You get offended at everything. You could not have revival offended. And the Bible says offenses will come. They will come. People will offend you. But woe to the man that takes offense. I told my staff, every staff that I hired, I said, I may offend you, not intentionally. And there's opportunities every day for me to be offended. Just get on the internet and read some of what people are saying. But the Lord said, woe to the man that takes an offense. Now, if you're ready because you know offenses will come, then when they come, you're not surprised. But I had a vision this afternoon, a reoccurring vision, where people were letting offenses go. I mean, people have been offended, the church, the ministry, and people just let it go. And you just, you just decided, I will not have a heart that's offended. People made a decision tonight, offenses will come, but I will not take one. It's too risky. And I've never been so protective over something that God did. I don't, I, when I hear my team murmur, gossip, grumble, we're, we're on it right away. Don't kill the revival. I'm so, I said, there are things that, that I may have let slide before that I won't let slide in this new scene. Don't kill the revival with your drama. And I had this vision this afternoon. I had a little nap, three o'clock, and I had this reoccurring vision. And the Lord said to me, 
the one thing that will hinder the move of God's Spirit is offense. And then when we gave up our offense, Roy, I heard us singing a little song. <laughs> and, and, and Roy, I knew it was the song. We've sung it so many times before. It was just the chorus. The world has nothing for me. I will follow you. And in my vision this afternoon, people were washed from bitterness, offense, and unforgiveness, hurt, and pain, and woundedness. And we just sung that little song, and the anointing came in an awesome way. And if you're watching me tonight, search your heart. Because God wants to give us an unprecedented move of His Spirit. A greater wave than the last wave. We're talking a tsunami wave. My God. This world has nothing for me. I will follow you. This world has nothing for me. I will follow you. This world has nothing for me. I will follow you. Come on, tell him tonight. This world has nothing for me. This world has nothing for me. I will follow you. This world has nothing for me. I will follow you. This world has nothing for me. I will follow you. This world has nothing for me. Cause I need to change. To come to my rescue Where else can I go? So what a day might I try to stay Capture me with your name I will follow I'm a father of you. This world has nothing for me. I'm a father of you. This world has nothing for me. I'm a father of you. This world has nothing for me. I'm a father of you. The 
This world is nothing for me. This world has nothing for me. greatest outpourings that God has given us in our lifetime a wave we wouldn't have the wave that we have today without this wave This third wave is going to be a wave of power with glory. But we wouldn't be ready for what God is about to do today without recognizing so many ministries that are such a part of what God is doing today. And I know that the prayer movement, I know that the call, I know that IHOP, Kansas City, I know they're blessing, they're praying for us. They're praying for the end time revival. And I know that if it wasn't for the second wave, Pensacola, repentance, so many got saved. We wouldn't be where we are today. But one outpouring that's most precious to me because it brought intimacy in the presence of God to the church. It brought refreshing and renewal to the church was what took place in Toronto, Canada. We've had the fathers and generals from Argentina, Steve Hill, John Kilpatrick from Pensacola, Lyndall Cooley has been here. Different waves, different moves. But tonight we have with us, and I asked him if he would give us a father's blessing. Yeah. Could we recognize my good friends, John and Carol, or not? Come up here. From Toronto. You know, I believe that only when the streams and the networks come together are we going to see a global outpouring. And so I want you just to give a moment and welcome. We have already. We just love you so much, John. And 
Carol. Give us a blessing. Share something. Oh, man. Well, Todd, we're just so thrilled and so blessed. You and Shauna and the Straters here in Lakeland and everybody. It's just amazing what God is doing. It's been going on all these days. 48, did you say? Something like that. And we've watched you from Hawaii. We've watched you from the Philippines. We've watched you from Toronto. And it's amazing. It's just all over the earth. The whole world is talking about it. And Carol and I are here to absolutely bless it with everything that's within we our are. being. <laughs> and say, more, Lord, let it come. Yes, Lord. Uh. Let the glory be outpoured in Lakeland and go from here to the ends of yes. the earth. Yeah. God bless Rory and Wendy putting it on the Amen. God Channel night after night. Yes. Give the God Channel a big shout of praise there. Yeah. All those guys doing such an amazing job. We recently visited their facility in Jerusalem and just watched as six or seven screens as program is, is going from Jerusalem to the ends of the earth and to the nations and the continents of this world. And this is a revival live all over the earth. It is absolutely incredible. And we're here uh, to buy oil. We tonight are. and all this week we want more. we have come mm. to buy oil and to be filled up and popped up <laughs> we do <laughs> because we want more don't we love we do indeed oh. well so. todd it was amazing because at the airport in charlotte i went to get a coffee coming here and the girl in the in the um coffee kiosk I, she said, where are you going? And I said, I'm going to Lakeland. And she said, our church, some of the people in our church just went. And everything is broken out in this little church in Charlotte, North Carolina. It's everywhere. Yeah. Ah, and we just are so absolutely thrilled, Todd. We just bless you. Go for it, man. Just go. Go for it. Go I'm for it. You. Go for it. Yo. Mm. I feel like the special presence of God that's here tonight yeah. is because in Toronto, when God poured His Spirit out in 1994, it was the presence of God. That was it the was. primary yeah. Yeah. and the intimacy, and the yeah. Father heart of God. Yeah. See, Moses said, if your presence does not go with us, then do not lead us up from here. Where do you go from His presence? You oh. have to have His presence. Open your hands and say, Lord, let your presence fall upon me. I want your presence above everything. That's why I've come. I want to be enriched in the presence of God. Many of you watching at home thinking, I don't know, should I go? Should I not go? Yes, you should go. Amen. You should come and get in the presence. I know it's coming over television and over your computer, but... Oh, it is thick here, people. It it's is better felt thick than tell or watch. Glorious. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. Well, thank you, John and Carol. I know you guys came to soak and receive, and we just we just pray. Boom. <laughs> and Lord, we bless John today. Oh, I take oh he's care. such a father in revival, Lord. And I pray that this wave would go all the way back to Toronto. Bam! This wave of power. Because I'm a Canadian, and I love my nation, I love Canada, and I'm not forgetting about Canada, but my God, let a third wave of mighty Holy Ghost fire and power go all the way back to the nation of Canada, and all the way back to Toronto, in the name of Jesus! And Lord, I pray for every little church, I'm telling you right now, little churches <laughs> when the fire falls on you you're going to become mega because you're going to become an oasis and you're going to become a healing pool and you're going to become a healing center and you're going to become an apostolic center Lord, let that glory and let that fire fall on every church and ministry hungry for the anointing. Oh. Oh. 
<laughs> oh, the glory of God is so thick tonight. <laughs> We just soak it up. You know, every meeting has been so different. They, they, they yelled out, it's 49 nights. But every meeting has been so unique. So different. Only one thing remains the same. The presence of God. You know, there were some great things happening today. Boyan, why don't you uh, come up here for a moment? Because today was the first day that we started to train the harvesters. And this is going to happen tomorrow at 1.30. Thursday, Friday at 1.30 at Ignited Church. We're going to be here Saturday at 10 a.m. in the arena. But we're sending out harvesters that want to carry this anointing to the streets. So how many would you say showed up to be trained today to take it out? Well, there were over 500 believers that came. Wait, 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 wait. Over 500 people showed up to take it to the streets? <laughs> over 500. I really honor them. They came to the morning meeting. They were going to be in tonight's meeting. And instead of grabbing lunch and resting in between the two meetings, over 500 of these precious people went out there to bring the gospel to people in Lakeland. It's awesome. What? Wait a minute. 500 people. 500. Uh, because they wanted to go out and share what they were receiving in the revival. And, and they were taking it not only to the malls and the marketplace, but even door to door. Door to door in apartment complexes. Uh, I personally, I went back after the outreach to take care of some work at home and they knocked on my door and tried to get my worship leader saved. And so... <laughs> and people showed up at your door. <laughs> That's right. How well, many of you were a part of taking it out today? Just wave at me. Just wave at me. Wow. God bless you. God bless you. Awesome. God bless. How many of you, this is your first night in the revival. Just wave at me. Wow. Now I'm telling you right now, you, you didn't know, but 10 o'clock... Every day at 10 o'clock, we have teaching and preaching and impartation, Ignited Church. And then now at 1.30, we're meeting at Ignited Church for those that are willing to receive impartation, training, and equipping and take it to the streets. So we're doing it tomorrow. But we've heard some testimonies already of, of people getting saved. How many people do we know at this moment? I'm sure there's more. Yeah. But at this moment, how many stories have come in of people that led people to Jesus? Well, we've received 67 commitment cards back. So 67 people came to the Lord on the streets Just today. Just today, on the yeah. streets, 67 people came to Jesus on the streets of Lakeland. I mean, we're, we're, and we're, we're seeing hundreds saved here as well. But this thing's only going to grow, Boyle. And, and we've also heard some stories of, of people getting healed already. Yeah. What's so awesome about this is that people are coming to get some and they're going out and giving some as well. And the signs and wonders that are taking place in here in these meetings. You know, I'd like to hear a couple right now. Yeah. Is there anybody in the arena that, that got, you, you led someone to Christ and got them healed? I'd like to know just spontaneously right now. Who's got a crazy story? You got, come up here right now. Just come right up. Anybody else got a story from today? You went out, somebody got healed, somebody got saved, cast the devil out. And I mean, maybe you've never done it before. Um, who's never done it like that before? Today was your first time and you went for it. You went out today. Why don't you come up here right now and tell me about it. Come on up here right now. Anybody else have a testimony from going out today? Right here, this lady. Why don't you come up? Anybody else? I want to hear stories of people that are taking it to the streets and uh, that maybe never done it before. Who else? Come on, don't be shy. Who else went out today? You went out today? You got come up here right now. Anybody else that you got a story? You were you, you led someone to Christ? Why don't you come up here right now? Just come on up. You're right here. Come on. Uh, we want to hear stories. Come on. Right there. Yeah, come on up. You know, we're going to do this every night. You get out in the street. You get a part of the evangelism in the afternoon. We're going to take stories. And we want you to come and share your story with the world because...
This is so much bigger than what's just happening here. And, 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 and it is evangelism. I'm telling you right now, I don't know how many thousands have made decisions for Christ already in these meetings. How many untold thousands watching all over the world. But now we're taking it to the streets of the city every day and not just get somebody saved. We, we're trying to give them a power encounter and, and see the miracles that are happening in the arena happen in the apartment complexes, happen in the mall, happen in Walmart, Starbucks. So... I want to hear some of the stories. So I'm going to put you on the spot. Why don't you tell me what your name is, first of all? Chad Deary. Chad, yes. where are you from, Chad? Lakeland. You're from Lakeland? Yes. So you, you got a heart for your city? Yes. And you came to the training today? Yes, I did. Now, what did you receive? Um, well, it's a, I've been saved for about 12 years. Never once evangelized as far as um, out on the streets. Been teaching in the church and stuff like that. So you've been saved 12 years. You could say, I've never done evangelism like this before. Never in like 12 this. 12 no, years. No, you, no. You've never been like, I'm going to get no. some and then go out and try to give it away. You've never no. done this. After the second night when I was here, I said, if he has any type of evangelist training, I'll be at that and I'm going to take it. Come on. I'm asking all evangelists, people that are watching me right now, come and give us a week, especially some of those young radical people. You're going to get out of school. You're going to get out of ministry school. You're going to graduate. Why don't you come on down, serve a week, serve a month. We could take the entire city for Christ. Amen. So you went to the training. And what happened today when you went to the street, Chad? Uh, well, we had two awesome stories. One was went to the uh, door of a, a lady that was um, basically recommitted herself. Asked her if she wanted the, the, the power of speaking in tongues. She received uh, right when... Wait, we, wait, wait, wait. Somebody gave their heart back to the Lord. Right. And you took it a step further. Yep. Let's get them filled with the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. Amen. Yes. And what happened? She started speaking right away. And, and uh, at the same time, I felt led that she had, she had closed her door to her apartment. And I felt led that there was someone in there that was sick. So I asked her if she had anyone that was sick inside. And she brought out her son who had... Uh, hearing aids in both of his ears. Wait, 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 wait. You, you were pretty bold, Chad. You, yeah. Did you hear that? Do you have anyone sick inside that apartment? You got the door closed, but I think there's somebody on the other side. And she brings her son out with hearing aids? Amen, yes. And what happened? And uh, my brother uh, uh, laid hands on this young boy and is seven years old. And, and after that, we felt the manifestation presence right there. We knew there, there was a miracle. And I said, you know, let's do something that he couldn't do before, just like you said. And uh, my brother, and he said, well, whisper in his ear. So my brother went up to him and just very, very, very quietly said, uh, how old are you? And he got this big glow on his face, said, I'm seven years old. And, and he was just... Come on. His deafness was healed. It was here. He took it out of his ear. He took the two hearing aids out of his ear. And he was hearing. And he was hearing. Even a whisper. Even a whisper. Now, uh, is this contagious? Are you infected? Oh, I, 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 told, I told Jeff Miller that I said, felt like I was born again. I mean, it was, I just got... Are you going to keep it up? Yeah, I'm going to go, uh, as long I as think, here, I'm going to... I think everyone that's visiting the revival needs to go out at least once. Do you, what do you think, Chad? No question about it. No question about it. And so you, you're going to... Come here, I'm going to bless you with that. Uh, you want this anointing now? Everything you got. You want it all? Everything. Bam! In Jesus' name. Come on, that's awesome. What do we got here, Tom? Hey, uh, check this one out. Uh, this is uh, Kevin. He's from Minneapolis, Minnesota. And uh, Minnesota! <laughs> yeah! Check this out. He went to a house. They were waiting for him. Tell the story, Kevin. Three of them. Three people were waiting in a house. Yeah, we started just talking to one lady, and she's like, we kind of worked through the script a little bit. And then... So, because we, we actually give you a script. Yeah, it, so, we actually sweet. provide you with the material. So, if you've never done it, we make it easy for you to go out and use a script, which is Holy Ghost inspired. It's a great flow. But anyways, she's like, I'm getting hot. I want to go. We need to go inside. So, to make a long story short, we dealt with one gal. She, ha she was, I just want to, I just want to give my life back to God. She goes, I walked away from him a long time ago. She was backslidden, and and, yeah. was, and so she got rededicated right there. Yeah, and she's like, I want to be, I want to get rid of this addiction to pot. So we prayed over that too, and she just had tears flowing down her eyes. So I know that freedom came to her today too. And, and then, how about the two other ladies? Okay, and then there was this lady's daughter. She was 16, and she went and laid back in the back bedroom, and I just knew we weren't done. 
I knew that the Lord had something for her. And I was just saying to her, you can go to college. You can make something of your life. God's got a plan. And she, she rededicated her life. The 16-year-old girl. 16-year-old. So two out of the three yeah. made decisions to give their heart back to the Lord. Yeah. Have you ever done anything like this? It's been a long time. And are, you, are you addicted now? I'm addicted. <laughs> and so you're going to take it back to Minnesota? Oh, yeah. How long are you here for? I was supposed to be here only one week, but now I'm going to be here like a month. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. I was supposed to be here a week, but I'm staying a month. Come on, and, and, and Lord, let the fires burn in him and never go out in Jesus' name. We got another one over here? Yeah, Todd, this is Ben from Pennsylvania, and he went out with a team into These an apartment These are ordinary complex. people. Yeah. <laughs> I'm ordinary too, so be encouraged. It's good, it's good. thank you. <laughs> so oh. tell me your name? Ben. From Pennsylvania? From Pennsylvania, yes. And so you went to the training today? I went to the training today. I just really felt God saying that you need to take this and you need to, you need to, <laughs> you need to give it away. Uh, you can't just... Whoa. People will get more impartation in the meetings yeah. if they'll go and give it away in the day. Yeah. I believe that. I, I just I just felt that, that I needed to do this. So you went. Have you ever done anything like this? No, never. Nothing so like you're it. like, um, how long have you been a Christian? Uh, seven years. Seven years, and you've never done any evangelism like this. And you, like you this. went to the training today. Went to the training. How did you enjoy the training? The training was uh, it was good. It was simple. It was clear. Um, it was. It, it, it was almost too easy. Almost too easy? We went to the doors and, and things just happened. They were they were ready. They were they, they wanted it. Oh. No, no. When you went to the door, had the people heard from reading in the newspaper or watching on the internet? Are yeah. people familiar with the revival here? Uh, I think they just read it in the newspaper yesterday. Yeah, and, we were on the front page. And so they were they were open to it. You know, we could we could so talk what about happened? it. And so we, we met this lady, uh, the very first door we got in. Oh. You feel that anointing? Yep. <clears throat> so you met a lady. Yeah. And uh, and she didn't want to talk to us. She didn't? No. <laughs> she she just got home from work. Uh, you know, she, she didn't even want to open the door at first. Uh, she opened the door said, oh, we're from, uh, you know, from the Florida outpouring. Um, and she said, uh, oh, yeah, I, I think I maybe heard of it, but I don't want to. And so she was shutting the door and I said, what, is there anything we can pray for you about before you go? Anything we can pray for. You say, oh, yeah. So rather than trying to cram the gospel down their throat, we're using prayer. She, yeah, she, Do you need anything to pray for? Do you need a miracle? Yep. And, and she said what? And she said, oh, I, why, yes, I have, I have arthritis and, and pain down my spine and in my hip. Um, and and she, was, she was already getting a little emotional at that point. I uh, just touched that we were So she's been in pain in her hip. Her yep. And you laid hands on her. What happened? And, and we laid hands on her. The, the pain started to go away a little bit. Uh, we, we prayed again. And... Uh, and the, the pain was gone. It was gone. Yep. She got healed on the spot. Yep. In her apartment. Yep. A lady that didn't even want you there. Didn't even want us at first. What happened after she got healed? Uh, I, I got a word from the Lord that that he he just cherished her. That was the word. And, and so you started prophesying. Yeah. And and she she, she started crying. She started crying. Oh, Did she, was, she get she saved? So what happened? I, she was already she was already a believer. Um, but she had never been to the revival. She yeah. There's something that, that's keeping her from doing that right now. Um, but you got but we prayed that that, uh, that that will be taken away too. That, that you barrier. got her healed and you yep. prophesied over. You've yep. never done anything like this. Never Are you going to continue to do it? Yeah, I'm taking it back to Penn State. Bam! Taking it back to Pennsylvania. That's awesome. Come on. How many people want to get activated? Who needs to get activated? I think I think you need to take a little step out there and just kind of do something you've never done before. And we're going to hear just a couple more testimonies. And there's still miracles that are going to happen tonight. People are going to get healed tonight. I know I've been holding back because there's going to be a moment in this service where that healing anointing is going to begin to flow and uh I, I can't wait but i'm telling you the greatest miracle tom is salvation so i want to hear stories you know so what's your name this is peggy she's from kansas city she went out evangelizing with them today they couldn't go to the apartment complex where they wanted so they ended up going to the walmart parking lot yeah and um the walmart's a great place for miracles it, you know what we didn't know where to go so we just prayed and prayed and prayed and then we felt oh well, we'll just go there but um, I want to say that we met a gentleman who had lost his parents. His mom and his dad were into drugs and different and things. And this is at Walmart? At this Walmart. He, he, he was like abandoned as a child and his, and his grandparents raised him. And at 14, they both died. And he was mad 
and you know distressed at God. And how did you meet him in the parking lot? Well, he just came out and we had a little survey and we just said um So you used the, what we provided you with the little Absolutely. We just said, "Hey, we just have a survey. Do you have a moment?" Sure. Um we, you don't need to be in a hurry or anything. No. He was so right. And um it was so easy. So it you started sharing, he told you his story. What happened? Um well first of all he told me his name and I said wow your name's in the Bible and I go do you know that Aaron hung out with Moses and he's like really and Have I go Have you ever done anything like this? Um I've done You done, done some of this things. evangelism yeah, stuff? Yeah, I have. But So what um, happened to him? Well, his heart, every time we talked about the father heart of God because I felt it was all about the spirit of adoption. And you know, in 1996, the Lord profoundly profoundly touched my life through Toronto and John and Carol. I mean, I can't, I don't even have words to describe so you how You got a revelation of the father's love and it changed you. It so changed me and then even That's different so you were trying to give it to this young guy today in the parking lot. Over and over and Did he, you end up playing with him? He did. He prayed. Did he get saved or did he, he got saved? He gave his life to the Lord. He gave his life to the Lord. Today. And he wants to be here. In fact, he said his his knee was hurting him and he said his father got raised a month ago from the hospital that some people came to pray for him and he said his father was like unto death. Uh, they he had So people already from the revival went to the hospital. I, we don't know. Somebody prayed for we him. We don't yeah, someone prayed but it was only healed. a month ago, Todd. Did you pray for his knee? He said oh, he didn't go for that, but um we but told him. But he gave him, his heart to the Lord. He did and we he wanted to come here. He might I don't even he might even be here now, but he wanted to bring his girlfriend and him here. Well, if they show up, I'll pray for him and I just pray that you receive a double portion of the boomba. Bam in Jesus mighty name. That's awesome. Let's hear another one over here. Just a, just a couple more. I came all the way from Norway to hit the streets in Lakeland. Come on. All the way from Norway. <laughs> you I mean, yeah. so you went today. How did you? How did it go? Uh, yeah, we went uh, three together on the street, and um, uh, we uh, just was about to go to our older home. But uh, we, uh, it was a closed gate, so we went to the city, what? and then um, we saw this man. You might, I might need an interpreter for you. <laughs> <laughs> so you went out to the streets today. Yeah. Did you pray with anybody? Yes, we uh, we uh, we uh, prayed with uh, one guy. Uh, that uh, tell us. Um, Tell us the story. Sven went and he prayed for a man in crutches. And as they prayed for the man with the crutches, the power of God hit the man. Now the man didn't get instantly healed, but what happened when the power of God hit him, he felt the power hit him and he gave his heart and life to Jesus Christ. Oh, come on. You see, here's what I like about that. Here's what I like about it. They prayed for him to get healed because he felt the presence of God. He got saved. Yes. Some of you are going about it the wrong way. You try to go out just dry. Hey, uh, can I talk to you about Jesus? But you know, people are open to, hey, can I pray for you? Yeah. And then when you get the opportunity to pray for them, they feel the anointing, and then boom, they get saved. Yeah. You're pretty excited about this. Yes, this is. Are you taking this back to Norway? Yes, uh, that's absolutely. absolutely. Uh, it's, um, I also uh, went to. Uh, there was a guy at the parking lines, and he also uh, uh, gave his life to Christ. You got another guy saved in the parking lot? Yeah, and I also uh, was a uh, younger guy on the streets today. It's two, two today. So uh, you had two people get saved today. Yeah. Lord, let him take this mighty anointing back to Norway and be changed. Did you? Come on, people are getting people saved and praying for miracles. I love it. Come on, Tom. This is amazing, Todd. This is uh, Angelo. He's all the way from Australia. He's come. He went out evangelizing today. And he went. He met R Richard today out in the streets. He led Richard today to Christ wait, for wait, the wait, first wait. time. You led Richard to Christ. Yeah. And Richard's in the revival. Yeah. Welcome, Richard. Thank you. Thank now, you. why don't you tell me in your words what happened today, Richard, to you? Been you're, you're, you're weeping still. I lost my son three weeks ago in Iraq. I'm sorry. And I've been out there and I've been just drunk on alcohol and just not been able to do anything. And this man you, just, see, he just showed pain. up and from Australia and just, he was sent to me 
I know he was. Oh my God. I know he was. Are you hearing this? His son died three weeks ago in Iraq. And he, he turned the alcohol to numb the pain. And Angelo, you went out to the street today from Australia. N not today, two days ago. Three days ago. Three days ago. Three days ago. for help. In order to say, I can't help you, but I know someone who can with Jesus. You want him, he say, help me, help me. And so I, he pray, I introduced him to Jesus, he prayed the prayer of sinners. And um, I took him to the, to the revival. revival a couple of times. But uh, uh, last uh, night before last night, he felt, he felt the, uh, the, the, the Jesus touching him. You felt Jesus touch you. Tell me what it felt like. I didn't feel it nearly last night or the night before it as I have tonight. You feel it right now. I feel it so much right now. Right now, Lord. I, I can't hear him. Can't hear, hear him. He crossed the road. He crossed the road. You got hit by him. a car. Yeah. Lord, I just command your healing to come into that hip and leg right now. Bam! In the name of Jesus. Lord, and anoint him for more soul winning in Jesus' mighty name. Fire go all the way back to Australia. Come on, isn't that awesome? I'm telling you. He got Richard saved, and now Richard's here in the revival. That's good fruit. I'm telling you, that's I love that story. Just do one more, boy. Todd, on. this is a pastor, Pastor Gus from California, and a member from his church, Harold. Pastor and from California. Amen. What's the name of your church? Centro de Vida Cristiana. <laughs> okay. And you came today. Amen. And you went to the training, Pastor. Amen. And you went out to the street. Yes, we did. Tell me a story. What happened? The first one, we were driving by this hotel, and we saw three Hispanic men sitting out there. And I told the brother, I said, pull the car around. I said, we got to do something here. When we got there, the owner of the company came up. Brother Harold took off and started talking to him. And as I let these men, I was talking to him. I saw this snake there that took a strike at one of the men. And I asked him, I said, is he poisonous? He says, yes, that's a water moccasin. And I said, so are they poisonous? He says, yeah. And I said, well, we don't have water moccasins in California. We have rattlesnakes. And then all of a sudden the Lord Ooh, he says, uh, tell him that just as he smashed the head, that I had smashed the head of the enemy. So you used that story of the snake to tell ended him. Ended up sharing the gospel. What yes. happened? I asked him if that snake would have bit him, would he have gone to heaven? And he says, no. And I said, there's an opportunity today. So we led all three men to the Lord. All three got all saved? Three, yes. Come on. And then what? Did you pray for them? We prayed for them. They accepted Jesus Christ. They gave their numbers and I wrote it down and gave it to you guys. And, you know, it's just awesome what God's doing here. And I said, one of the things that we need to do is get reach out to the Hispanic community. Come on. And they're just sitting there. No, they don't know anything about it. And I was telling the brother today, I said, you know what? We got to go out there and reach them and just let them know that there's a God in heaven that's looking down upon the Hispanics. Hey, every race, every nation, there's no Shatere Bobokuna. Now, why did you come to Lakeland? Mm -hmm. Five years ago, I had a prophetic word given to me that a man, Tom Bentley, would pray over me for a double portion of the anointing God had given me to do. And I didn't know who you were. Five years ago, Five you years got ago. a prophetic word that I was going to lay hands on you. Amen. And you heard about the revival. Yes. And by, then what? My brother here. You told him about it. I've been crying for four days watching you on TV. I've been crying for four days on TV watching you, you know, the healings. And Where are you watching us from? Sacramento, California, Roseville, California. And I, I preached in Sacramento many times. Yes. Did you ever see me there? No. But you saw us on TV. Yeah. I and just, you started crying for four days. You told this pastor. And, and you decided to come get some? Well, yeah. what happened was I heard the prophetic word five years ago. And brother was telling me, and I was in the hospital for six days, six months ago. And as I laid in the hospital, this nurse came and gave me a book. And behind the book, she says, go and receive in Florida. And I put all three together, and I said, I need to go. So, brother, you know no what? Idea. The blessing, <laughs> brother paid everything for me to be here. So I know that there is a purpose. Are you going to take here. this back to your church? Oh, amen. Lift your hands up. We're going to see that prophetic word fulfilled tonight. My God, I pray that this pastor, this hungry, hungry pastor would receive. Whoa. Double portion anointing on his life and ministry in Jesus' mighty name. Let it fire burn in his belly now in Jesus' mighty name. Ah! Take that anointing back to California, Roseville. Are you in a church in Roseville? This is my pastor right here. This is your pastor? Yes. So you guys have come to take the fire back together? Yes, sir. First thing you need to do when you get home? 
Call all the people to the altar and lay hands on them all. And watch what happens. God bless you. Come on. Thursday night. Give the Lord a mighty shout. Tomorrow, 1.30, Ignited Church. And we're training harvesters. Over 500 showed up today. We're going to train thousands over the next month. And we're going to activate people to take what's happening here out to the streets of the city. We're going to love and bless the city. And uh, that's the only way we're going to see this thing really go all over the world. Amen? Amen. So that's awesome. Now, I'm going to share one thing with you tonight before I pray for the sick. And I want to talk about how to contend for miracles. How many of you here tonight need a desperate, you have a desperate situation and you're in need of a healing or a miracle? How many of you know somebody that's in desperate need of a healing or a miracle? And when I was praying this afternoon, I just saw something in the spirit. I saw us warring and contending for miracles. And there's something I've learned over the years. I've learned how to contend for miracles and healing. And I believe we need to contend in America. And part of what's been happening in these meetings over the last 49 nights is we've been contending in worship. We've been contending in praise. And night after night, not only are we praying for the sick, but night after night, hungry people are coming from all over the world and coming from all over America. And we're saying, God, we're ready. We're ready. We're hungry. And we're contending. And God has been pouring out. We've been not just tokens. We've been getting awesome tokens of God's grace. I'm telling you, last night was one of the strongest miracles services I've ever been in. I'm telling you the truth. There were so many miracles last night. There were so many empty wheelchairs at one point in the service. I, I lost count. And, and I'm telling you, the power of God was so strong, and it wasn't even the testimonies. It was just the electricity that was in the building last night. And we broke into a realm of the miraculous that I want to touch again tonight and every day. How about you? And how many of you want to be activated in a greater measure of healing? Don't get quiet on me now. I want you to turn in your Bibles to the book of James. The book of James, the fifth chapter. And I'm going to share real quick a part of my testimony with you about how God called me into the ministry of healing because I didn't just have a gift of healing I didn't even just decide well God we're going to pray for the sick in, in fact I would put it this way I birthed the healing ministry was it the will of God? Was it the grace of God? Absolutely. Is it the will of God and the grace of God for you? Absolutely. But there was something about me pursuing the ministry of healing. And I had to learn some things about how to contend, how to break through. And I remember when I was 22 years old and I was reading in the Bible all the stories of miracles and healing and deliverance. And I was a young man. I had only been saved at that point about four years. And I said, my God, I believe you're going to use me one day. And I'm going to take the saving, healing, delivering power of Jesus Christ around the world. And I'm going to preach the uncompromising gospel of the kingdom of heaven. Heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, and cast out devils. I had it in my heart. I desired it at 22 years old. When I was working, at that time I was working in a sawmill pulling lumber off of the green chain. And I thought, my God, I know that there's going to be a day. It might be when I'm 30. It might be when I'm 40. But I know there's going to be a day that you're going to use me. And I had always believed in the supernatural. I got saved by the supernatural. I mean, I heard the audible voice of God when I was 18 in my drug dealer's trailer. And I was instantaneously delivered without craving, without withdrawal from every addiction. Every addiction, the drugs and alcohol and every other addiction you can imagine. And I was saved supernaturally. 18 in my drug dealer's trailer. And I mean, one moment I was a drug addict, the next moment I wanted to tell everybody that I met about Jesus. 
And nobody had to talk to me about the supernatural. Nobody had to talk to me about angels. Nobody had to talk to me about, you know, visions or, or people getting healed. I read it in the Bible. I read the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I read the book of Acts. And I got so hungry for what I read about in the Bible, just like every person in the room here tonight. We're just hungry to see the kingdom of God, not in word only, but the kingdom of God in power. And it's time for the world to have a demonstration of the Holy Spirit in power. I'm tired of just persuasive words of human wisdom. I'm tired tired of all the intellectual all you know thank god we, we gotta have a good theology but theology without power is nothing i'm telling you right now we can have all the arguments in the world but a man with an experience outweighs a man with an argument i'm talking a biblical experience but i'm telling you tonight i'm tired of just trying to convince and provoke and challenge and argue and debate myself into the kingdom we've got souls to save and there, there was always something in my heart that said my god i want it to be like paul the apostle so I want to preach the gospel like Paul in a demonstration of the Holy Spirit and power. The kingdom of God is not a matter of mere talking, but it's a matter of power. I said, it's time for the business. And everywhere I looked in the gospels, these signs follow them who believe. Everywhere I looked in the ministry of Jesus, I saw Jesus healing every sickness and every disease. And I thought, my God, and you promised that he who believes in me will do the same works that I do. And even greater works than these shall he do. And I said, my God, Everything that I read about in the Bible seems to indicate that miracles are for today and miracles are to operate through every believer. And I accepted that. And nobody had to tell me about it and I didn't have to read any books. I just couldn't get enough of the gospel. In fact, there are times in my life to this day where I'll just sit down and read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in the book of Acts. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in the book of Acts. Matthew, Mark, Luke. And the only stories I'll read are every miracle recorded in the Bible. Every story of healing. Every story of deliverance. Because I want to know Jesus. Because I, I want to know the miracle worker. I want to know the healer. I want to know the great deliverer. And, and the more I can fall in love with Jesus in the Bible, the greater the miracles are. And so every time I'm feeling like my faith tank is a little low and I need I'm like my God I got to step into that crusade tonight and there's going to be people there that need to be healed blind deaf criminal. I just go to the gospels and, and, and I'm telling you it might be a story it may be the gospel that you already know but we need to hear the gospel again I love hearing the gospel I love evangelists that preach the gospel I love reading books on the gospel I love the gospel of the kingdom of heaven and I can hear it a thousand times and a thousand times all over again because there's something that happens in my heart faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And I'm telling you, I remember when I thought, my God, there it is. You got all these miracles in the Bible. And, and you know, it seems to be a, a regular occurrence for those that are, that you're using in the Bible. I said, could it be that you, you're the same today, yesterday and forever? I am the Lord and I change not. Could it be today that these things could happen? And at that time in my life, I was, you know, 18 years old when I got saved. And when I started getting hungry and desiring the things that I read about in the Bible, I thought, God, there's nobody here that's even talking to me about these things and I had no outside influence as far as any other religious voice or any other I didn't know who Benny Hinn was I didn't know who some of the great ministries were today that move in science and wonders and, and all I had was me and my Bible and, my, and you know remember when I got saved my mom was totally deaf my mother raised me I lived in a community of 3,000 people and so it was me my deaf mom in this community of 3,000 people didn't want to hang out with my drug friends anymore so all I had was the Bible and I just started reading the Bible as if everything in the Bible was literal. And I thought, my God, the God of Abraham's talking to me. And I, I'd read the Bible and I'd be like, the God of Moses is talking to me. The God of Jacob is talking to me. And, and, and I, just, I just didn't put it in all the, the graphs and charts and grids and break it down into theological understanding depending on what church and denomination you go to. I just, just read the Bible and I accepted it and I got really hungry. And you know, the Bible says to desire, earnestly desire spiritual gifts. And so when I read through the list of spiritual gifts, I read through the gifts of healing, the gifts of faith, and the gifts of miracles. I said, well, there's three of the nine right there. And those were the three that I really wanted. So I thought, well, God, right now I don't have by the sovereign grace of God. I don't have by an open vision. I don't have by an angelic encounter. I don't have by somebody prophesying over me. I don't have the gift of healing. I don't have the gift of faith. And I don't have the gift of miracles. And I said, I sure wish that I did. And then I started thinking about, 
you know, men and women that God used. You know, as I got saved and as I progressed in my Christianity, I started hearing about John G. Lake and Smith Wigglesworth and Catherine Coleman and Amy Semple McPherson. And I started hearing about ministries today that, that are, are being used in healing and signs and wonders. And I said, my God, I wished I could be like them. Oh, Reinhard Bonnke, T.L. Osborne. And I, I started to have this faith in my heart. But then I started to think about my testimony and my background. And I thought, my God, I don't, I, I don't know if you're ever going to be able to use me. I'm, I'm a mess. And and uh, this, I'm at 22 years old. I'd only been saved four years, and and I had this dream in my heart. And then, but I thought, I don't know if it's God's will to use me in healing. I don't know if it's God's will for me to have a gift of miracles. I don't know if it's God's will. You know, maybe you have to be anointed as a healing ministry. Maybe you need to be anointed like Benny Hinn as a healing evangelist. And for the rest of us, well, you know, we got we can anoint people with oil every once in a while, and uh, you know, they'll get healed. Uh, maybe when the elders pray. And so I was left with this hunger in my heart, wondering if I was ever going to see the power of God. And then I came across that promise in 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, you know, to desire, earnestly desire spiritual gifts. I really want you to go after it. I want you to want it. And I thought, well, I'm going to begin to desire, you know, especially that you might prophesy. I really wasn't interested in prophesying. I was like, well, God, can I desire the gift of healing, the gift of faith and the gift of miracles? So my healing ministry began by desire. And I fed the fire by the Gospels, and I fed the fire of desire by every story of every man and woman that God has used in miracles in the last hundred years. And the desire grew, and the desperation grew, and I, I just got before God, and you know, I would just, Lord, I want the healing anointing, and there was no real evidence that there was any kind of a healing anointing in my life. There was no fire in my hands, there was no healing angel, not at that time. There was no open visions, there was no word of knowledge operating in my life, and uh, in fact, I really didn't have a ministry platform. And I remember the day I decided the sick were going to be healed, I actually made a conscious decision. I'm going to have a healing ministry. I don't even know if you called me to it or not, God, but it looks like it happened to every believer, so I'm going to have me one. And I didn't even know how to have a healing ministry, John. So the first sermon that I ever preached, well, I just took one of Smith Wigglesworth's sermons and preached on radical faith for the impossible. You know, and then, and then I started reading T.L. Osborne, and I, I thought, well, you know, I'm just going to preach some of what he preached and see if anything happens. And I just started teaching some of the truths about divine healing and just presenting healing. And then I didn't know how to have a healing service. I didn't know how to move in the anointing. And I had no idea how to move in the anointing. So I would just call the sick. Hey, anybody want any prayer? I'm going to lay hands on you. And I'd lay hands on everybody and nobody would be healed. I can remember meetings where I laid hands on every person. And there were people that didn't even feel anything. There were no signs. I didn't feel anything in my hand. There were no lightning bolts. There was no great power and anointing. It was just raw faith. I was just going for it. And uh, I'd pray for a thousand people. And if nobody was healed, I'd pray for another thousand. There was just something inside of me that wasn't going to give up until I saw a miracle. And I just pushed through. In fact, I was like sowing seed, you know. And I, I thought about sowing seed in the realm of praying for the sick rather than just money. I thought, God, if you reap what you sow, if I pray for the deaf long enough, I'm going to reap a harvest of deaf ears. And then I thought to myself, if I pray for people in wheelchairs long enough, I'm going to reap a harvest of people coming out of wheelchairs. If I pray for the blind. And so, in fact, I broke sickness into categories. And according to your faith, let it be done unto you. And so I said, well, God, I've got faith right now for pain. Anybody that's got pain. And so I'd give altar calls for anybody that had pain and I'd pray for everybody and nobody would be healed and I'd just keep going for it. And you know, a few meetings would go by and somebody would get healed and I'd be like, praise God. And then the next time I had this authority and I was like, if he can do it he, and once, he can do it again. So every time I would go into a meeting, I'd get comfortable and I'd go, anybody got pain? And I'd pray for the people with pain and they'd get healed. And pretty soon I had a pretty good pain healing ministry going. And in every meeting I could go into, I knew for sure if I prayed for people with pain, people with pain were going to be healed. And I became very comfortable. And the Lord said, what about the deaf? You see, and that was the one miracle I wanted to see because my mom was deaf. And so I thought to myself, well, God, you know, that's a little bit harder getting somebody that's deaf to hear. It's going to take a little bit more faith than someone that's got pain. That's the way that we think about these things. So I started sowing into the deaf. Every meeting, I'd ask for the deaf. And I prayed, I don't know how many deaf people I prayed for. And, I mean, hundreds that have never been healed. And I would lay hands on them, and I'd say, my God, and they wouldn't be healed. And I'd say, 
But the Bible says the deaf hear. And so I'd pray for the deaf and the deaf wouldn't hear. And I'd pray for the deaf and the deaf wouldn't hear. And I'd pray for the deaf and the deaf wouldn't hear. And pretty soon, and I remember the first time it happened, I was in Prince George, British Columbia. I prayed for a woman that was deaf and she reminded me of my mom. So something in my heart happened. There was a little more compassion because I saw my mom and I thought, this is like my mom. And her daughter was there and her daughter was weeping because she wanted her mom to hear. And so I laid hands on her and I prayed. And I remember the first time she, she talked to me because she had never been able to speak. She was a deaf mute. And, and just the noise as she began to hear and she covered her ears because of the pain and she heard the sound coming out of the music and, and uh, she got healed. And I'll never forget it to this day. You know, since that day, the most common manifestation of healing in our meetings is deaf ears. I can go into any arena, any meeting, and just pray for the deaf and the deaf will hear. In fact, it doesn't take any faith now for me. Because I've seen God do it so many times over and over again. One time we were in India and they lined up 139 deaf mutes all born deaf and they could never speak they could never hear and I thought my God there's 139 and I laid hands on them and every one of them heard and spoke everyone now that's not the case with all the deaf that we pray for there's people that get healed people that lose their healing there's people that get partial healing I mean I understand but that was one of the most significant times in my life in ministry and it just became something that was natural and then I remember the Lord saying well Todd you're never gonna see the cripple walk if you don't pray for the cripple and so I thought well it's time to pray for the cripple but I didn't have the same faith for the cripple as I did for the one that had pain or for the one that was deaf or for the one that had cancer you always want to avoid the wheelchairs. You always want to avoid. And, and I remember the day God told me to say, it's time for you to you reap what you sow. It's time for you to sow some prayer every meeting into praying for anybody that's in a wheelchair, whether you see any results or not. If you pray for a thousand and nobody gets healed, pray for another thousand. I want you to contend for this. You know, the Bible says many died never receiving the promise. People go, how many times do I go forward and get healing prayer, Todd? I've been in the revival for the last 14 days. You've prayed for me a dozen times and I'm not healed. Are you dead yet? <laughs> when does the Bible ever give you permission to give up on the promise? In fact, you just need to decide today whether it's a healing or whether it's any other promise that God gave you. You need to make the decision today you're going to receive it. Even if that means many died never receiving the promise. It's about the good fight of faith all the way to the end. There's never, well, you know, I went to the meeting and I got prayer once, twice, three. How many times do I get prayer? I've been prayed for by every evangelist you can imagine. I've been to every healing meeting, every healing crusade. God didn't give us the permission to give up. We can't take the lack of the manifestation of healing in our lives as a sign that God doesn't heal today or that God may not want to heal you. That we're battling all the way. And it's the same way with souls. Just because there's people in hell doesn't mean it was God's will. Surely God could have saved them. Try to figure that one out. A good loving God that desires that none perish... But there's people that died that we know that never made a decision to believe in the Lord Jesus. Tell me that was God's will. Now you can throw predestination, sovereignty, God hardened the heart of Pharaoh. But I just cannot accept that salvation isn't for everybody. I just believe God so loved the whole world. Salvation is for everybody. And I, sometimes you got to snatch them out of the fire. you got to go after them. Some you save with compassion. Some you snatch out of the fire. There's an urgency to the hour. But I just can't accept that it was God's will that put them there. But there, you just don't understand some of those things. And I put healing in the same category. Just because there's people you know that didn't get healed and died doesn't mean it's not God's will. You can throw all the sovereignty and theology. I just refuse to accept that. And I just pray for the sick. And if I pray for a thousand and nobody's healed, I pray for a thousand more. I just keep going because I'm so convinced that his redemptive name is Jehovah Rapha. I am the Lord that healeth thee. He forgives my sin and he heals my disease. And I just, I'm so convinced in the gospel that healing is as much of the gospel promise as the forgiveness of sin and salvation. I'm just so convinced that in the same way that he shed his blood for the remission of our sin, by his stripes we are healed, that he was wounded and suffered I, I just tend to believe they're one and the same and so I present the gospel in that way 
And if I prayed for you tonight and you didn't get healed, I wouldn't tell you it was because you didn't have enough faith. In fact, people go, well, how come I failed to receive healing? I could give you 30 reasons why. In fact, I did, a, I did a story one time, an article, 30 reasons why it's God's will to heal you. I can give you 30 reasons right now why God wants to heal you. And I can give you 30 reasons right now why you didn't receive your healing. But unless I'm led by the Spirit, I'm not even going to try. But if you need to have some peace and comfort and understanding, it's in the bookstore. I'm just saying... I'm just saying, it's not enough to say that if you didn't receive your miracle, it's because you didn't have enough faith. And, and if you didn't receive tonight, doesn't mean you're not going to receive tomorrow night. And if you really want to be healed, you might need to give God that more than one night in the revival. Well, you know, let's go and see if anything happens and come stumbling up to the altar. I told you so. Nothing happened to me. You need to want it. There's people that have been in these meetings for 14 days, and it's not to the 14th day that they receive from the Lord. And sometimes... God never even promised that it was going to be instant. The Bible promises they will recover. I remember the story of the ten lepers. When did they get healed? When they went. As they went. As they, we get letters every day of people that were healed on the, on the internet, the television. Letters every day. I was in the meeting a week ago and you prayed for me and a week later my healing manifested. But so many people give up because they fail to see a manifestation of God's promise now. They fail to feel anything. I all thought I didn't feel anything, so I guess God doesn't want to heal me. And, and so many preachers give up in what they really believe about healing and don't want to pray for the sick because they don't think they have a gift of healing. Well, you know, if I had a gift of healing, then people would have been healed. Surely if you prayed for a thousand people and nobody was healed, you're going to give up. But I just so wanted it. I just so wanted it. I made a decision right out of Hebrews, the 11th chapter, the 6th verse. God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And it was in the context of the promise of without faith, it's impossible to please him for he who comes to him must believe that he is. It's without faith. So we're talking about faith. What is faith? God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. I just tend to believe that faith is something that's persistent. Faith is something that doesn't give up. Faith is something that's diligent. Faith is something that keeps asking, keeps seeking, keep knocking. Faith is something that's so convinced in what God said that you're not going to stop going after what God said and what God promised until you have the manifestation of what he said. Even if that means many died never receiving the promise. It's not about what well, I tried to get healed for a whole year and I went on a 40 day fast and I went to five healing meetings. You need to make the decision in your heart today. You need to make the decision in your heart today that you're going to go after this and that you're going to war and contend and that you're going to sow some seed and that you're going to pray for the sick until you see a breakthrough. I'm telling you right now. And so I began to sow into the deaf until the deaf would hear. And I began to sow into the cancers until the cancers would, would be healed. And I began to sow into the wheelchairs until people would begin to get out of wheelchairs. Even if that meant I had to pray for a thousand people and risk people going, well, Todd, you know, I thought you said you had a gift of healing. Look at all those people that you prayed for that weren't healed. So let me just read something to you here out of the book of James. We've only got a few minutes left on the, on the television. We're live. But uh, why don't you turn to James chapter 5. And let's just look at verse 13. There's just some things here that I love. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone among you cheerful? Let him sing psalms. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick. Now, here's what I love about this promise. If anyone among you is suffering, what does it say? Let who pray? him pray is anyone among you suffering let him pray you got to go through the trial you got to go through the hardship you got to walk through the fire i can't pray it off of you when you're suffering and you're and you cannot tell me that this instance of suffering is the same as sickness either because in the very next verse the bible says is anyone among you sick 
so clearly suffering and sickness are two different things. The suffering in this instance could not be sickness because he said, is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. And in the next verse, he says, is anyone among you sick? Come and get rid of it. Suffering, you pray. If you're sick, come and get healed. That's enough for me to believe that it's God's will to heal all the sick all the time. That's, just, that's enough for me. Is anyone among you sick? Let him pray. Or is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Obviously, sickness could be called suffering. But God's talking about a different suffering. He's not talking about suffering because of physical infirmity. He's talking about a suffering of the things that you go through in life, hardships, trials. Is anyone among you sick? Come and get rid of it. God gives an invitation to all. Is anyone among you sick? If I wanted you to be sick, I wouldn't have given a general invitation. Is anyone among you sick? Come and get rid of what I gave you. The prayer of faith will save the sick. And then look what it says. And the Lord will raise him up. And if he's committed sin, he'll be forgiven. See, there's the connection again between healing and the forgiveness of sin. You get healed, God will forgive your sin. But I didn't even repent of my sin. Because God cannot deal with sickness without dealing with sin. If God deals with sickness, he forgives your sin. In the same promise in Psalms 103, he forgives all my sin and heals all my disease. Because sickness and sin are one and the same. If he's going to heal you, he's going to raise you up and forgive you your sin. If he's going to forgive you of your sin, he's going to say, rise, take up your bed and walk. That's why so many people, when they receive salvation, in the moment they receive salvation, they receive healing. In fact, I like to get people healed in the moment that they get saved before they have a chance to get into the church. There were two people here a couple days ago that were in wheelchairs and they accepted Christ. I laid hands on one man, he had MS for 11 years. Never got out of that wheelchair and walked for 11 years. Power of God came on him. His body vibrated. He came out of the wheelchair and he walked for the first time in 11 years. Do you know why it was so easy to ha have him receive healing? Because he just received Christ. There's something about the forgiveness of sin and healing. They're one and the same. In, the, in Africa, and all the crusades that I do all over the world, the moment that I, I have them receive Christ is the same moment that I release healing. Because they're one and the same. Now look at this promise. It goes on. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed because the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Right in the context of we want to see people get healed, it's going to take the effective, fervent prayer. We're talking about warring and contending for miracles. What's the effective, fervent prayer? We're talking about the prayer of faith. What is the prayer of faith? Is the prayer of faith the prayer that prays once? And there it is. People have believed that faith in the church today is if you ever ask God for the same thing more than once, the reason you didn't get it is because you didn't believe him the first time. And there's just something in the church today that struggles with, well, you know, I claim by faith I was healed, brother. That's not good enough for me. Don't go walking away with your crippled leg going, I was healed, I was healed. By faith, I'm healed. You're crippled. Come on. Don't lie to me. Don't, don't deny the symptom. How about this? Here's what real faith is. I have a need, and this is the symptom, but I so believe that God wants me to be healed. I'm coming to receive it, and I don't have it right now, but I'm going to get prayer again. See, I'm, I'm telling you today that the prayer of faith is the fervent prayer of a, of a righteous man that availeth much. What is the fervent prayer of a righteous man? It's the prayer of Elijah, the prayer of faith. It's the prayer that keeps on praying. How many times did Elijah pray? Seven times. How many times have you received prayer for your miracle? How many times have you prayed for the sick? Is it seven? Is it 70 times seven? I mean, many died not receiving the promise. I just tend to believe that if we're going to see another realm of the miraculous in the body of Christ, there's going to be times where heaven so opens like last night and the anointing comes and God just sovereignly moves to the arena and people are healed and the power of the Lord is present to heal. But at the same time, there's going to be those times where you need to exercise the prayer of faith and the prayer of faith will save the sick. But the prayer of faith may be the prayer that keeps on praying. And even after you pray once, twice, three, four, five, and you come and receive prayer a sixth time. On the seventh time, it's not even a complete healing. It's a cloud the size of a man's hand. 
And I just tend to believe there needs to be a freedom in the church today to understand what real faith is. And real faith is God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Real faith is the story, the parable in Luke, the 17th chapter of the, of the parable of the persistent widow that kept coming and wearying the judge and kept coming and wearying the judge. And, and it was granted to her because she came and she wouldn't give up. And so I'm wanting to give a little bit of hope. I wanted to give a little bit of encouragement. I wanted to give a little bit of faith to those of you that are watching tonight via the television, via the internet, and maybe you're in the arena tonight and you really do need a miracle. I want you to understand we're not promising a get quick, get fixed, get healed message. We're saying we believe that Jesus Christ is the same today. He's going to be the same as he was yesterday and he's going to be the same forever. I am the Lord and I change not. Jesus healed every sickness and every disease. Why should we not expect that he heals today the same way that he healed 2,000 years ago so we have an expectancy because God promised. And at the same time those of you seeking and needing to receive healing need to understand that it's okay if you don't receive an instant miracle. It's okay if you have to contend. It's okay if you have to come and, and receive prayer many times and if you're going to pray for the sick, you may have to pray for a thousand. If nobody's healed, you can pray for another thousand. That's how I birthed my healing ministry. And every time God gave me a breakthrough, I just kept going. And I've never gave up. And I've been in some of the hardest countries, some of the hardest crowds, some of the hardest atmospheres So with every kind of skeptic you could imagine. I've been in situations where I had to produce the power of God or that was it. How many of you tonight are ready to contend for your miracle? I mean, really go after it. Really begin to cry out. And you're absolutely convinced that it's God's will. And you're not going to wait for me. See, tonight is the night that you receive healing, not because of my gift. Tonight's the night that you receive healing, not because of the anointing that's on me flowing to you. Tonight's the night... To that we war and contend and make a decision that we're not going to give up and we're going to keep going. Because some of you that are here tonight have given up already. Some of you watching. God wants to heal you. So I want you to stand up. Oh, we're, we're laboring a little bit, you know, in the spirit tonight. The glory was awesome, but there's a little bit of warfare right now. And that's okay. Because every time we've got to push in just a little bit more, God's about to take us to the next level. And so I just want to release people that are in the arena tonight. I want to release you into faith, into real faith. And I just want to take off the pressure. The pressure to have to produce something. The pressure to have to muster something up. And the pressure when you come to the altar. Well, you know, I don't want to disappoint you, Todd. I had a friend of mine that didn't want me to pray for him in the meeting. Because he was afraid that if I prayed for him and nothing happened, he would, have to, he would feel the pressure of disappointing me. Do you know how many times people have come up onto this platform to give a testimony and I'll ask them the question, what happened to you? And they'll say, I felt fire go through my body. And I'll ask them, are you healed? And they'll, uh, mm, uh, I got a little bit of pain. Come on, that's okay. You got a little bit of pain. Great. Let's just go after it again. You need to understand that not everybody that's being touched and everybody that's claiming healing is being instantly healed. There's partial healing. There's healing that manifests as they go. There's miracles that, that need to be contended for. Miracles that you need to war over. I mean, when you're dealing with situations where people are terminally ill and situations where people are terminally sick, it may not come in an instant. So here's what I tell you. If you come tonight and I pray for you and you fail to receive, come tomorrow and I'll pray again. If you don't get healed tomorrow, come the next day and I'll pray. If you don't get healed the next day, come again and we'll pray. And we'll just keep praying until there's a breakthrough. We'll stand in faith with you. So I want to release people in this arena tonight into real faith. And I just want to take off the pressure. How many are really desiring tonight to break through? You really want to go to the next level. I want you to tell the Lord. Just go ahead. Just tell the Lord right now. Just begin to tell the Lord. Come on, the pastors, churches. Just begin to tell the Lord. God, I'm really desiring this anointing in my life. I wouldn't be here in the outpouring if I didn't want to receive it. And God, I just really need a breakthrough of miracles. And I'm ready to go to the next level. Not everything comes easy. The glory was easy tonight. But Lord, I'm just so desperate for more. 
I'm ready to step into the breakthrough. Some of you watching me, you need to renew your faith. You need to renew your commitment in believing believing God for the supernatural, believing God for signs and wonders. You've lost that that hope. You've you've become a little gun shy. How many of you are ready to take up that faith again? Just be renewed in your spirit. You know, it's such an adventure. It, it, it's no labor for me. Day after day as people are touched and people are saved and people are healed, it's no labor for me. Oh, it may be a labor for you, but it's, it's no labor for me. So Lord, I just pray for those watching right now as we're about to go off the air. Release their healing tonight. Release their miracle in the mighty name of Jesus. And I want to encourage you to stand in faith. Continue to war. Continue to contend and press in. Keep on asking. Keep on seeking. Keep on knocking. Lift up your voice even now and say, my God, today's the day. Today's the day. Maybe it's been 10 years you've been standing in faith. Maybe 15. Maybe the last five years and you need a breakthrough. May it be today. I pray that your healing would come today in the mighty name of Jesus. As I come into your presence, past.